Good day, everybody. I'd like to give just a small presentation on the Burmese verb she and its meanings. I'm planning to make a small series called Tips for Burmese Learners, and this will be part one. We'll see how this format works, and I'd appreciate any feedback so I can improve in the future. So let's start with the verb she. It's pronounced she. Usually in English, it's translated to having two meanings. One is to have, as we can see in this example sentence, which means also had an extra key. The second meaning is to be, as to be in a place. That's not right. To accuse someone, there has to be a witness. So, tete here, which is located right here, tete means witness. She, ya de. She is to be, ya is must. So, questions that learners may have is, for example, when, when I say things like, I have a dog, why do I have to say ma? For example, do know ma? Don't you just use ma to mark a location? For example, She knew quite well that the bracelets were at the foot of the bed. Or you could say things like, That's a definite location. In Yangon, people, many, there are. So we know that ma marks a location, but why do I have to say things like jino ma kuite gaon shide? Why can't you say jino ga kuite gaon shide? I have a dog, because people think well ga is usually the subject marker. And for example, when we're talking with people on the street, usually we don't hear this ma a lot. So when don't you have to use a marker? Those are two short questions I want to answer today. So let's get into the true meaning of she. The true meaning of she is to exist. So for example, we have this sentence here. There was also no sunshine is a good translation, but a way that it can be looked at as sunshine also did not exist. We have a clear ka subject marker here. Sunshine ka le. Sunshine, subject, also, not exist. Or here, di ma ye shi ye. You think, for example, you're in a, you're in a restaurant, and you want to know if there is drinking water. You would usually say like, tao ye shi la or tao ye ya la is usually in how you would ask if something is available at a restaurant. Tao ye ya la, but you could uh, also say tao ye shi la, and they would say di ma. There is water here, or you look at it as water exists here. The third example, um, you can look at it as I have a dog, or one dog exists unto me. I, I am the location, I am the embodiment of where this dog exists. It, he exists in my possession. Kind of like that. It's a weird mindset, but that's how you can look at it if you need to remember why you would need to say ma in a situation like this. So when don't you have to use a marker, for example? <clears throat> so, in colloquial style, a lot of times the marker is uh, elided. It's kind of known that it's there, and usually in writing and in very grammatical speech, it would still be there, but in colloquial speech style, a lot of times it's ignored. Hey, mama, phone she la. She really. Hey, mama, do you have a phone? Yeah, I do. That would be one thing where it's understood that you could say, ma 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 or me uh, ma or ne. Don't don't say ne very often unless you really know the person. But ne me kamya ma phone she la. That thing is all kind of alighted here, but it's understood. Then you could say, Jinoma Shide Le. 
also in relative clauses and if you don't know what those are in English for example uh, the girl that hit the cat the girl that hit the cat we have one complete clause the girl hit the cat but that's made into a relative the girl that hit the cat came to my house for example but we have here so that's a complete noun and you can add a verb after that students all over Myanmar so students that we don't have the relativizer the or de here we just have she and you could say like the hit the dog for example uh, uh, hit is a violent verb but that's usually what linguists would use to give examples of these things there are other instances where she is quite common in um, less colloquial speech uh, you'll hear um, or you'll read a lot of times in newspaper people saying thi she for to know instead of just saying thi de they would say thi she de or jan she de ya she de ba she de de she de dui she de jap she de so these are all instances where you can put she right after a verb and the ma isn't really required but again these aren't really common in colloquial speech. You'll see them a lot in writing. And these examples, by the way, came from the sec the first source that I'm listing here. I realize the alphabetical order alphabetical order now is kind of off. But that's from John O'Kell and Anna Allett's Burmese Myanmar Dictionary Grammatical Forms from Curson Press. And there's actually a new version that's uh, available for purchase in Yangon from the Bansodan Gallery. And there's also, I believe, a version on either Lulu or Create Space. I forget which one. Um, but the all the natural examples that I gave from before are all from seasite.niu.edu. And that's a nice place to go to if you want to look at some Burmese literature with translations on the side. So, Jesu Dimbare. I hope this helped, and I hope to be making more of these in the future. Have a good day, everyone.